Hey everyone, I'm here with Dave, and we're gonna do a whole little thrifting trip today. We're gonna find hopefully a bunch of Muppets. I mean, you, why are you even questioning that? Of course, we're gonna find Muppets. Well, I'm gonna hope we're gonna find some Muppets. We always find some stupid Muppets. Stupid Muppets. But that's what you're here for. You wanna see me find Muppets, or at least die trying. So we, wanna, we want you to find a whole bunch of movies from me. That's what we want. Muppet movies, of course, <laughs> obviously. I mean, we'll probably find obviously. those too. Right. So we're gonna begin our trip here at Jubilee Ministries Thrift and uh, we'll see what we can find. Over here in the book section, there's a whole bunch of Sesame Street books. See you later, mashed potatoes, and a bunch of these Sesame Street book club titles, just a ton of them. Of course, I already have all those, but I did find a couple of these golden scratch and sniff books, including Big Bird Gets Lost, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Smell No Evil, Tales of Sesame Gulch, and Grover's Just So So Stories. I have a couple of these, but these are still fairly hard to find, so I wanna pick them up anyway, and uh, you know, pass them on to a fellow fan in need. But the ones I don't have, I'm definitely gonna pick up for my collection. Those are really cool. I know, I know, we we have to do it. If, I, if we don't do it, we're gonna get the comments down below. We have to check out the the scratch and smell bug. So I'm not bug. looking, I'm not looking. I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna, not gonna hear, <laughs> but I think we are going to smell, right? Is that the deal? We're, we're definitely gonna smell no evil. What are we? Oh, we're smelling sardines. Okay, all right. Mmm, right. sardinius. Like, like sardinimus? Sardinimus? Oh, dear God. <laughs> well, the, the, the roses <laughs> should help. Let's, let's, do, let's do the roses. <laughs> oh, that, that, that watches the, the smell away. Okay. Wow, what, what year is this book from? Uh, 1855. No, it's uh, 1975. Yeah, I think the sardines have gone bad. And, and the roses, and, too. And the roses, too. Yeah. Wow. We're now at another Jubilee, and I found a few Muppet books here. Here we have Fozzie's Funnies, a book of silly jokes and riddles. A Muppet Babies book, The Giant Next Door, which I'm surprised I didn't already have. It's at least not on my spreadsheet, so I'm definitely picking that up. And this Sesame Street book, Happy Birthday, read as a story, sign as a guest book. Either way, it's perfect for parties. Okay, awesome. So some Sesame Street, some Muppet Babies, and some Muppets. That's like the trifecta. If only they had some Fraggle Rock here, I think that'd be a, a perfect find. I'm over here finding somewhat, I guess, technically vintage Power Rangers bed sheets. They're from 2000. 2000 is considered vintage now, right? It's is it close. Like, uh, it's to 25 years? Yes, yeah, so we're pushing it. Almost, it's almost, almost, almost vintage Power Rangers, vintage adjacent Circle. Power Rangers bed sheets. Those are cool. I'm gonna pass on those, but you're finding, I mean, look at this, chain link garland, Sesame Street chain link garland. You know, when you're having your birthday party, but we've already discussed when you're having your Sesame Street birthday party, you need decorations. So you have a book, and then you have uh, party supplies to go along with it to you're, decorate. You're, you're picking up your, your dollar store decorations? No, no. I, I, the, the, the book is a party enough for Are me. you not grabbing those? I am not. No. How much are they? I think they're like three dollars. Yeah, uh, all right, yeah, you can get those at Dollar, dollar Tree. Right. And I, I could make these if I wanted to. And it's Sesame Street anyway. You're not collecting, That's right. You're not That's collecting right. Sesame Street anymore, back. right? Never mind, putting all this back. We actually have made it to the Salvation Army. I love coming out to the Salvation Army. I don't have a Salvation Army near me. And this is a family store, so you can pick up a whole new family while you're here. I already got one of those in, in Florida waiting for me. <laughs> I found a copy of Buddy and Frenzy Dinosaur Train title, which I'm pretty sure I already have, so I'm gonna pass on that. But I am gonna pick up this copy of Elmo Saves Christmas based on the Emmy-winning TV special. That's really cool. And this dual book. Yes, I'll tell you about that in a second, but it's a dual book. Sesame Street Big Block Party. See, flip me over for another story. You flip it over and see Sesame Street Sounds of the City. Um, it doesn't talk or anything, so... No, I don't really hear all the sounds coming out of that city, but it's an interesting little storybook by uh, Reader's Digest, which I don't believe I have, so I'm gonna flip this back over and flip it into my collection, I think. We've made our way to yet another store. Now we're in a Goodwill, and I'm looking through this whole thing of plush. I found this 
two pack of Bird and Ernie in this you know, small plush, which is kind of cool. Three dollars. I think I already have those, so I'm probably gonna pass on those. I'm also gonna pass on this kind of beat up yet somewhat vintage looking uh, Elmo. It has its applause tag, which is neat, but not like his other tang tag as well. Just just his applause tag. So I'm gonna pass on that Elmo, but that's cool to see. I don't think you don't, you don't see that Elmo very often, especially not in this condition. But if it had its tags, probably wanna pick them up. But just as he is. It's gonna stay. Over in the cups and mugs, I found this Sesame Street Turvis Tumbler. Check this out. Got the Count and Bert and Ernie, Big Bird Cookie Monster. That is awesome. These Turvis Tumblers usually go for like 20 or $25 if you try to buy them new. They're super, super overpriced. But here, it's only $3. And that is such a cool graphic on there. All right, I don't think I can pass this up. All right, awesome. Grabbing this Sesame Street Turvis Tumbler. Anyway, we, we continuing on? We, yeah. All right, we're, we're still heading towards Hershey, Pennsylvania. The only the only downfall is I'm pretty sure Chocolate World, since it's like off season, is gonna be closed by the time we get out there, but I kind of wanted some chocolate. We completely forgot there's right down the road another Jubilee ministry. This, well, probably we forgot about this store for good reasons. We like never, find anything in this store. The, the other stores are hit or miss. This store is pretty much like 99% miss, but hit. did you say hit? Miss. <laughs> anyway, we're... Miss, miss, miss. miss. In the DVD department, here's um, Elmo and Friends. There's also a really cool, oh, this actually breaks my heart. The Sesame Street 20 and years and still counting DVD done with Bill Cosby and Kermit the Frog. This is such a an amazing, amazing special. Unfortunately, the disc is in terrible condition, so I just have to leave this here. That's just heartbreaking, because otherwise I would totally pick that up. But I think I am going to pick up this Sesame Street Essentials Milestone 3-Pack Ready for School, Elmo Visits the Doctor, and Bedtime with Elmo. I've never seen it in a 3-Pack like this. They're, of course, usually sold individually, but this is a collection. Putting them all together, and uh, okay, that's kind of interesting, so maybe picking this one up. Over here in the book section, I didn't find anything I really want to pick up, but I could not resist showing you this, you guys, because this is just amazing. They have pretty much the entire collection of the Sesame Street Treasury. Pretty much each volume is here, 1 through 15. There's also the, pretty much, I think, the entire collection, I think of all 15 volumes of the Sesame Street Library here, too. So, while they're asking $2 a piece for each book, that's a bit much. That works out to be like $25 or $30 for both collections here. So that's a bit much, but could not resist seeing both here. I had to show you both since they're both here. That's pretty wild. You see a couple of volumes here and there, usually not like the entire collections of both at one time. So pretty cool. Over here in the actual children's book section, there's still another whole batch of Sesame Street books. These, of course, are the later on re-releases of the other Sesame Street books um, that came out in the 70s. There's just a whole bunch of them here. These are really, really cool. If I didn't have a bunch of these already, I might be tempted to pick some of these up, but I'm not getting every single variation of these. As crazy as I am, still not getting a, gonna go that, that crazy and get every single variation of all these books. Although that is super tempting. But what I'm not gonna pass up on, even though I already have it, is this copy of Bye Bye Diapers, a Jim Henson's Muppet Babies book. This is a reprint of this book as well. And I believe I may already have, but it's in such great condition, I just can't pass it up. So I am gonna wind up picking up this copy of Bye Bye Diapers and uh, saying it hello, hello to my collection. Okay, so that's gonna do it for Jubilee, I'm really surprised we found stuff inside there, to be, to be honest. It was a hit. It was. Power positivity. It was the power of the Spice Girl I positivity. I as I walked in. That's what happened. That's what it was. <laughs> Again, I'm really surprised we found stuff in there. Anyway, it's almost 8 o'clock. Everything pretty much around here shuts down come 8 o'clock, but... It, still have time. It's not 8 o'clock yet. I, I think right down the street is a Goodwill. We're going to go hit up them quickly, and I think that's probably going to be the last store, but where there's, where there's a few minutes, there's another thrift store. We're gonna try to get there before they close. Okay, we have made it with 20 minutes to spare at the uh, the Goodwill here in, where are we? Lebanon? No, Someplace? we're 
or somewhere else. Palmyra, Palmyra, Pennsylvania. That is where we are right now, right outside of Hershey, Pennsylvania. So again, we've got 20 minutes. I'm sure they're gonna love us walking into this store with 20 minutes until, until closing. But I mean, 20 minutes is, is plenty of enough time yeah, to look through all the, all the movies and to, find, and to find some Muppets. Plenty of time. Dave spotted this Zoe plush. It's very interesting. It's like, you know, kind of like a beanbag plush. And it sits there and in theory holds up this picture frame that has her name on it that would be a picture of you with her name on it around it. It's very strange. It's from Sesame Place, as you can see. That's interesting. It doesn't have its Sesame Place tag, so I'm not sure when this was released. It's very interesting. I don't know if I should be picking that Zoe up or not. Like I said, very tempting. We'll see. As you've seen, we came across a whole bunch of these Sesame Street Library titles throughout our trip. They have a whole bunch here, as you can see. They're asking $2 a piece, just like in the other locations. But what just blew my mind was they have the entire Sesame Street treasury here, not for $2 a piece, but for $4, $5, right? $4.99, $5 total. So I am totally gonna pick that up for the Muppet Stuff store because that is just an, an incredible find for a really, really good price. Hold on, wait a minute. We're not quite done yet because we still had about a half an hour until Hershey's Chocolate World closed. So. We figure since we're right down the street, why not pop in, ride the amazing free chocolate dark ride they have that teaches you all about how they how they make chocolate. We just got off that. Wait, wait, teaches? You mean that's not actually where they make the chocolate? Are you trying <laughs> to tell me that the anthropomorphized candy people are not the ones actually <laughs> making miniature versions of themselves? I mean, I mean, that they tell you to eat themselves? <laughs> it's kind of weird. The whole cannibalism thing? They're telling me that. Not real. No, I'm sorry. I'm real. sorry to tell you, it's not real. But they've got a giant Kit Kat bar. They've got a giant Hershey's bar over here. Look at look at this. <laughs> I mean, I, I do love me some Twizzlers. If only they made a Hershey almond bar this size, I would totally buy one. But all right, guys, we got it. We got to go. They're, they're, this store's also closing at the moment. People are walking around trying to rush us out of here, but. We had to stop. We had to stop it. We had to buy some candy and again, ride the amazing free chocolate tour ride they have here. In my opinion, I love the coasters, but it's the best ride Hershey has and it's free. It's the only one with cannibals. <laughs> it's the only, only one with cannibalism in it. You are correct. All right, guys, that is going to do it. So again, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys. Bye. As you can see, now I am back here in the Muppet Stuff Museum after our whirlwind thrifting adventure up towards Hershey Park. As you saw, we hit up multiple Jubilees, multiple Goodwills, and even a Salvation Army, and had a great time finding multiple things along the way. You can watch the video Dave shot that day in the links below. All right, but now let me show you what I picked up, which, as you saw, included a bunch of books, like this 2010 Reader's Digest Sesame Street Flip Over Book, Big Block Party, and Sounds of the City. This 2017 Sourcebooks Jabberwocky Sesame Street book, Happy Birthday. This 1987 Golden Book release of Grover's So-So Stories. This 1977 Golden Book Kids paperback, Tales of Sesame Gulch. And the 1975 Golden Scratch and Sniff book, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Smell No Evil which I already had, but because this copy still has its original Scratch and Sniff sticker on it, it's just slightly more minty than the copy I already had, so I'm going to be replacing it with this new one. I also picked up this 1978 Golden Scratch and Sniff book, Sesame Street Big Bird Gets Lost, which again, was actually in slightly better condition than the copy I already had, so I'm going to be replacing it and upgrading it with this version. These duplicates will be available in the Muppet Stuff store and will hopefully find their way into one of your collections. Speaking of the Muppet Stuff store, I also picked up this 1997 storybook adaptation of Elmo Saves Christmas so that a fellow fan that needs it for their collection can find it. As for non-Sesame Street books, I found this 1999 Golden Books re-release of the Muppet Babies Bye Bye Diapers book, 
which I'm pretty sure I already have, but I still have to go through my books and double check to see if this version is in better condition than the one I already have. I was super stoked to find this 1986 Golden Books, Jim Henson Presents The Giant Next Door, starring the Muppet Babies, shockingly, I did not already have in my collection, which as you can see is quite thick for a Muppet Babies book. Of course, most of the pages don't have that much text on them, it's just mainly illustrations, but still, pretty hefty for a children's book. Another Muppet book I picked up during this trip, though not any of the stores I visited that day, was this paperback copy of Tales of a Sixth Grade Muppet, Clash of the Class Clowns, released in 2012. The reason you didn't see me pick it up is because Dave found this on one of his thrifting adventures, but gave it to me during our trip. I also picked up this Sesame Street Milestones 3-pack DVD set of Ready for School, Elmo Visits the Doctor, and Bedtime with Elmo, released in 2010 by Warner Brothers, as well as this My First Leap Pad, Bear in the Big Blue House, Tutter's Tiny Trip, Interactive Book and Cartridge, which as you can see is still brand new and factory sealed. Tutter is getting ready to go on a trip with his grandpa Flutter, but he's not sure if he's ready to face the big world. After all, he's such a teeny, tiny mouse. Bear comes to the rescue, but Tutter also needs your help to prepare for his journey. Help him face his fears and pack his bag in this wonderful adventure. Help Tutter get ready for his latest adventure with pre-writing, character emotions, deductive reasoning, shapes, and musical exploration. Released in 2004 by Leapfrog Enterprises. I could not resist this Sesame Street Tervis Big Faces Tumblr. I mean, just look at this thing. I just love how their big faces are staring right at you. It's just photoshopped, I get it, but man, it's just really well done. So you have Bert, Grover, Ernie, The Count, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, Oscar, and Elmo. And like I said, it's just really well done. And for $3 versus $20, I could not help pick this up. I also picked up the Zoe Beanbag Plush with the Zoe picture frame from Sesame Place. I'm not sure exactly when this was released. I'm pretty sure like the 2010s. It has the later used Sesame Place logo, not the classic logo they had in the 80s, which they now use again. But it's just really nicely done. She kind of sits there, holds the frame. Just very cute. Hey, Zoe, st stop eating the frame. You guys did a whole special about not eating pictures. It was literally called Don't Eat the Pictures. I mean, I guess it didn't say anything about the frame though. Sadly, this was Dave and I's last thrifting trip for a while. As you may know, he moved to Florida recently. So this was just kind of our last swan song of us, just the two of us together out thrifting. And what a way to go out. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite item from this video was. Please be sure to follow us on our social media channels and I'll see you next time.